All right, let's take a look at how to make um, a simple heads up display and functionality. I can see like this on off toggle switch. Um, now I'm not going to show how to you know make something this complex, but after I you see what I'm doing today, you should be able to make something similar to this. So you can see here that first of all, these sliders only move a certain distance. I can also see that I have it set up where this one control controls transparency. Um, and you can see that I have all these systems here. So if I wanted to, maybe I turn this off. I want all these to be off. I just turn on the skeleton. And here's maybe the arteries and veins. Um, and all of these are transparency throughout as well. So let's kind of talk about how that is done. So at a very simple level, I'm going to go to a clean Maya scene and I'm going to go to create polygon cube. Okay, so this is going to be our object, and this would represent really anything we want it to be, uh, character, whatever. And now I'm going to make my switches. So the first thing I need to do is create some type of interface. So I'm going to go to Type. Over here in the Attribute Editor, I'm going to click on Type, and I'm going to type On Off. Okay. And I also don't want there to be geometry, so I'm going to go down here to geometry and say create curve from type. And now I can see that I can click on this and hit delete, and it just leaves the type. And if I click on that, I can scale this down. There we go. And maybe move that over, you know, whatever I want. Okay, great. Now I want to create um, a switch on that. So what I could do, here's kind of a, a thing. So if I go to NURBS, square, I don't really like their squares. I feel like if you look here, okay, it looks all good, but when you grab an edge, you can see that they're all disconnected, okay? So you have to kind of attach them. I kind of feel like it's messy. Instead, I think kind of a, a faster trick to create a curve is to just do this. Curve tools, maybe um, EB curve tool options. And then I'm just going to say, hey, I want this to be linear. Now, if I press X, I'm going to go like this. And draw my curve. OK. And I'll do modify center pivot. And now I can kind of rotate this up 90 degrees. I, I know that seems kind of ridiculous, but I feel like now it's all one piece. Okay. I also want to do this, look at it in my orthographic views, and align this, it looks like, to the center here. Also bring this up like that, maybe scale this down. Okay, there we go. And let's see if I slide. Okay, yeah, that, that looks good. So on, off. Okay. So what I'm going to do is when it's off, I want the cube to disappear. And then when it's on, obviously, the cube to appear. So let's take a look at that. Uh, so right now, it's I feel like I can move this freely. OK? But I want it to be, feel like a switch. So I'm going to go like this, Modify, Freeze Transformations. And what that's going to do, it's going to zero everything out over here. Boom, so it's nice and clean. That's its nice starting point. Then I'm going to go into the Attribute Editor, and I'm going to go down. If I click on Curve 1, okay, what, the first tab, I'm going to go to Limit Information. And in this case, I want to limit Translate, and I want to translate X, okay, because X is the red one. So if I go to Translate X, I'm going to say, this is the current value is 0. I'm just going to push that over here and say that's its minimum. So now I can see that I can't push it farther than that way. Then I'm going to move it over here. And it's going to automatically update the value. Doesn't matter what that value is. I'm just going to push it over here and then say that's its maximum. So now I can see that that's as far as it goes. Now I can go back into my channel box and I can say, OK, translate X, that's all I care about. So I'm going to go to all of these and maybe lock selected. Now when I click on it, I'm not able to bring it up or forward, I can just move it like that. 
Okay, great. Now that I have my heads up display set up, now I'm ready to begin and set my kind of set driven key. So what I'll do is I'm going to select or switch to the animation menu set, key, set driven key set. All right, now I have this editor and I'm going to say this is my driver. So I'm going to say load driver, translate X. This is my driven, load driven, and visibility is what I wanted to drive. So the, this curve, translate X, is going to drive this cube's visibility. So when it's on on, I want the visibility to be on, so I'm going to go ahead and hit key. Now when I move this over here, now I'm going to select the cube. I can just select it here. I'm going to say I want the visibility to be off. Key. Notice I'm not keying it like normal. I'm not pressing S or anything. I have to press this key here. So now if I go like this, I can see that it's on or off. Okay. Now with this logic, you could, um, if you wanted to key the transparency of that, okay, what you could do is you could select the Lambert because that's what that is. Um, I would su suggest giving it a new Lambert, but I'll just show you. So if I select it here, now I could say load driven, and now I could key the transparency. So basically at one, or at one side, it would, you know, the transparency would be set to one, and then it would be set to zero. Um, and I can see if I select that, So then basically your slider would be moving the transparency from 1 to 0 or from, I guess, 0 to 1. Okay, and with all that logic, I mean, basically with that simple logic right there, I feel like going back to something like this complex, obviously, you know, having the model, but you can see that it's nothing more than setting limit keys and then telling something to be on or off. And I think it's worth noting that on this, like for example, the um, what I'm doing is on skeletal system. You can see there's a lot of things in the skeleton. I'm keying the group visibility to be on or off, okay, rather than each individual piece. So if I key the group, anything inside that group, when the group is invisible, will be invisible. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful and, and kind of saves us some time in the future. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below.